Hi, this is Marty, and welcome back for another video. All right, so uh, in this video, um, this is a hot topic. I mean, this is like a big deal uh, with with everyone actually, but but very very big deal within the INFJ community. Okay, or the MBTI community. Okay, so what I have in my hand. Well, basically, let's go over this first. Okay, so we have I, INFJ and the entrepreneur. Okay, I'm sorry this video is is so long. It it, it has to be. I, I don't like cutting them up, so. I don't know, come back and watch it, whatever. All right, so this is um, career advice, lessons learned, INFJ and the entrepreneur. And I'm not gonna give you uh, any information on my background. Let's just see how I do on my own without you knowing anything about my background and assuming you haven't watched some of my earlier videos. And uh, well, maybe this is your first time watching me. All right, so what this basically is, is we have, um, different quadrants with regards to entrepreneurship. So what I want you to think about is this is a video about the INFJ entrepreneur. I am acting as the entrepreneur and I am going to address vendors, customers, finance, employees, marketing and day-to-day -day operations sitting on top of the foundation of life where I'm going to get my information from as it relates to the INFJ and how the INFJ is going to have difficulty with regards to all of this and also uh, tying into career advice. But um, this is not career advice per se, but I think you'll get the point as I go through this. Okay. What I, what, you, what I have in my hand is uh, basically from uh, Quora, uh, a very interesting website. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows it. And I get um, mental health, INFJ, MBTI, and a host of other things, relationship, all kinds of stuff in my email inbox, right? Okay. So basically, um, I don't have my glasses on, so I got to go. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to go over each one of these. Okay. And, and please excuse me because I have to read. So you can see, um, and oh, oh, I'm going to take a picture of this um, and put this um, at the end of the video so you can see where all of this came from and you can zoom in and read my writing. Just so you're aware, I'm going to try to talk fast too. Otherwise, this video would be like all day. Okay. Um, I spent the last three hours reading each one of these and I told myself, you cannot think about the question or the statement. You have to answer it like that. That is the only way that I felt I could be fair to you. And it goes on my um, old saying, and I take great pride in this, and you either know your shit or you don't. Period. End of story. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to read the title of each one of these. Okay. So, and, and I'm going to go down the list. There are 16 points here and I'm going to go through all of them. Okay. All right. So, um, how do I know if I have a true INFJ personality? There's, these are some behaviors that can tell you if you are a true INFJ. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically read it very quickly and then I'm going to go over each one and, and as it relates to if you are a true INFJ, how it relates to being an entrepreneur, owning your own business, and how it relates to vendors, customers, finance, and employees with regards to marketing and day-to-day -day operations of owning your own business, sitting on top of life. Okay. And again, I, I can't make this any faster than it is. Okay. So let me be very quick. Okay. Um, you have extrovert personality when you meet people outside uh, your office. Um, owner equals employee a uh, different view. Uh, friendly will be seen as non-professional. Okay, so when you are an introvert and you tr and you have to force yourself to be an extrovert, you are not in your natural state. So therefore, when you try to be overly friendly and, and overcome your introvert, you will be seen as overly friendly. That is not a good trait with regards to entrepreneurship because owning a business is about structure, solid, putting up a front that shows basically non-emotions. Okay, so, got it, okay. Uh, you felt alone and different for no apparent reasons. Okay, occupying your mind, second guessing. Okay, um, when you feel different, different is equal to insecurities 
and insecurities in business are always a bad thing. So as you are trying to overcome your feelings of being alone and different, you're trying to uh, you're trying to act and be inside of a very structured thing. Business is very, very structured. So it doesn't have time for, you know, the, the, you know, the wibbly wobbly, whatever, right? Just like, just like that. That's business. Okay. Um, you're full of contradiction. INFJ able to fit and adapt into various situations like a commute. This will hurt your ability to draw business boundaries. Okay. As you try to be a chameleon to everything, as you come outside of your introverted feelings and come out into extroverted, um, you are going uh, to have a difficulty with the structure of business and you're gonna be breaking boundaries and breaking those boundaries as it relates to dealing in a business environment looks um, non-professional, okay? All right, uh, you're able to see ideas or opinions in multiple perspectives. This is, that is always great. Okay, no matter, no matter what in life, that is always great. Okay, your decisions are based on intuition. Okay, all right, uh, some, sometimes people think you're a psych, but actually not. This will hurt you. This is a startup idea, not daily ops. Okay, your decisions are based on intuition. Okay, um, okay. When you, before you are ever a business owner and you are thinking about entrepreneurship, it is the dreams of changing the world and or changing a certain segment that you find interest in. That um, uh, intuition will allow you to become a great entrepreneur in startup. But once startup ends and it's now about the grind and about the day-to-day -day dealing with customers and vendors and finance and employees, that will start to hurt you and it will um, come into the fabric of your daily life and fuck you up. Okay. Uh, you're a dedicated, understanding person, which is a which is a best worker if you want to get work done. That is the entrepreneur trap. The entrepreneur trap is this. Uh, the bathroom needs to be cleaned. The trash needs to be taken out. If you have the finances and the capital to pay an employee or a service to do that job, whatever you are paying them, when you do that, you are now being paid that amount. Google it. That's called the entrepreneur trap. And uh, because you take such pride in perfection, you can actually become an exceptional within the entrepreneur trap. Okay. You love both logic and irrational things. Focus will be harder for you. Structure. Okay. Uh, you love logic and irrational things. Okay. So as it relates to business structure, you will enjoy the logic but as it relates to the startup and when you own your own business and the ability to expand with ideas, your, your, I can't, I don't know how to explain this, but your ability to dream big will cause you to divert and move away from the concentration that you need on the day to day with vendors, customers, employees, and most of all finance. And I'll come back to life later. All right. Um, this commonly happened to me. Strangers talk to you for no apparent rhyme or factors. Uh, INFJ radiate warmness that make people feel co comfy and at ease quickly. Uh, waste time with customers who are not profitable. Okay. As it relates to vendors, customers, and employees, uh, you will attract Vendors, customers, and employees that are a part of the cluster B, especially with employees, and they will gravitate toward you. Time equals money in business. And this will become something that will put you into bankruptcy, but it will be very insidious and slow. As you deal with vendors, customers, employees, and the day-to-day -day operations, as you bring these people into your life, you will see yourself extremely happy helping customers, employees with their businesses and their lives and forgetting about your life, okay? And vendors in working with them, not being as shrewd as you should be and insidiously undermining your own business. Your advice is sometimes quite mean for them. This is due to your straightforward nature, but also want to give the best advice for them dealing with, dealing with people. Okay, offensive to customers. All right, so because you have this different type of advice in different direction and you have this very straightforward nature, 
You will be thinking 10 steps ahead of your customers and your vendors and your employees, but the problem is, is that you're too straightforward and, and they are only concentrating on what's going on like the here and the now. Vendors are concentrating on what you're going to purchase from them, customers are concentrating on what you can do for them, and employees are concentrating on their goals, work bringing their family lives into yours because you're a talker, you're a thinker, and that will insidiously waste time and in business, time is money. Uh, you can be extroverted for a short time and need to recharge your energy at home, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, because of, your, because of your, um, your, your thought processes and your emotions and everything I've mentioned, you will deal with employees, customers, and vendors uh, in your own life, um, and you will be tired a lot. As it relates to your own life, your employees, customers, and vendors, day-to-day -day and marketing, and everything that deals with that, all of this will start to suck the life out of you and your personal life and time, period. Because you will not give up on this, because the entrepreneurial dream, you will neglect your life, neglect yourself, and you will become tired, thus having nothing left over for your own life and your own self. People can accept your opinion because it's illogical and out of society thinking behavior. Difficult when dealing with customers and vendors. Okay. Because you have out-of-the-box thinking and you're thinking so far ahead, when you deal with customers and their businesses and when you deal with employees, you will become involved in customer goals, employee goals, and maybe quite potentially also new startup vendors that you start working with. Say, for example, you have a graphic design business, you were over here, now you want to go with someone new and you will get involved with them. And suddenly a vendor doing work for you becomes a personal friend or a part of your personal life, thus sucking from you and your life. You love to explore new things that eventually make you disinterested in people, environments, uh, or anything else. Uh, unfocused, structured business. Okay. You love to explore new things and eventually make you dis disinterested. Okay. The INFJ uh, is the amazing startup guy, but once the startup is done and it becomes the grind with vendors, the grind with customers, the grind with employees and finance and marketing and day-to-day, -day, and it becomes a mundane loop. This will cause you to become unfocused, unstructured, and the business model of what you originally started as an entrepreneur will start to lose its luster and you will become disinterested. And when you become disinterested, you will start to look for another startup. Thus, the, thus basically what will happen is, if this is this, and this is success, here, here, and here. This is startup, startup. This is um, startup, uh, let's call it second wave, and this is, day to day. This is where the success is. This and this is um, where the INFJ lives. This uh, startup time is where the INFJ thrives. Uh, the, um, the INFJ will push startup further and further and further and further out to expand startup to avoid the day to day. It will be insidious and it will be something that the INFJ will do uh, on his own. Oh, and by the way, to the point, um, you will start to leave emotionally and mentally right there before the money comes in. Okay. Um, you can't handle criticism very well. Criticism can make you can make you feel a sense of worthlessness and hurt your feelings very much. Uh, horrible as a coworker. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, because you can't handle criticism, there will be employees and customers and vendors and finance, okay, around you that will criticize the way that you are dealing with startup, secondary startup, and the day-to-day -day operations, and you will not be able to handle it because you hate criticism. So therefore, you won't be open to it and you will run from it. Thus, whatever mistakes you set in stone, you will never listen to anybody else. And those mistakes will not surface until way later in second wave startup and in day to day. And once it reaches that point, it's too late. Life, uh, family,
personal friends will see your business, they will have opinions, and because you can't handle criticism, you will not take the advice of wife, mom, dad, brother, sister, friends, or anyone else that is in your personal life, and you will divide your life from your company huge mistake and it's all based on the INFJ not being able to handle criticism. Uh, perfectionism, very detail oriented, but sometimes tend to miss small details. Okay. Uh, bad for business financials and waste of time on non-essential things. Okay. Your perfectionism going back to like cleaning the bathroom and doing non-essential things. You will spend time doing things that are an absolute waste of time. You will spend two, three, four, five times doing it. Time is money in business and you will not even know you're doing it because the perfectionism will fulfill you. Okay. Um, okay. Small details as it relates to, uh, vendors, customers, employees, and finance marketing and day to day, pretty much the whole gamut, but especially finance, uh, you will miss the small details. You will not budget. You will overspend in areas that are self-fulfilling and you will not understand that the business needs the finances and the structure of the finances to exist and get through startup one, startup two, and into the day-to-day. -day. The most important thing in this whole thing as it relates to day-to-day -to -day is finance, then marketing. Don't let anybody ever tell you differently. In a business, money, say, increase in sales solves all business problems. Finance, marketing, period, end of story, or in 2020, social media. Okay. Um, you always have plans for upcoming days, although it's a loose plan. For example, tomorrow you want to go book a, a carnival. Uh, this will hurt the structure of the business and uh, job uh, descriptions. Okay. So, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, the, I, the INFJ is not an INTJ. And I'm going to do another video. I think the difference between INTJ and INFJ. Okay. So basically an INFJ does not do the INTJ to-do list. And I'll go over that later, but that's what that has to do with. So basically what I'm saying is as it relates to you always have plans for upcoming events, but they're loose plans. Business has to be structured. It has to be INTJ. So if you are in startup one, startup two, and in day to day, and you are still acting as INTJ, I meant to say INFJ. In this environment, it's going to insidiously create havoc within the structure of your day to day operations within your business. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll put that down. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go on each one of these, but I'm going to take like a two second break. Come back. You like it so far? I hope so. Good. Be right back. Okay. Welcome back. So this is the second sheet and, and let's get into it and continue. Make this video as, as, as small as possible. Okay. So which profession suits INFJ the most? Okay, this is a former video game writer, 2007, 2018. Okay, long-suffering INFJ here, some ideal careers for INFJs. Okay, so uh, writer, number one, writer. All right, a writer has no business in a business, period, end of story. I mean, it's freaking stupid. Okay. Uh, criminal uh, profile. INFJs can read people and are experts on honing in on people's motivations and next moves. They're also human lie detectors and don't shy away from the darkest sides of the human experience. Creates the narrow customer base. Okay. So as a criminal profiler, you are going to automatically shy away from customers and or vendors or employees that would be very helpful to your business. But because you're a criminal profiler, you are going to profile someone and, and, and because you're an INFJ insidiously not include them when they could be the best fit. Very insidious and detrimental to startup one, two, and day-to-day -day operations. Number three, counselor, therapist. Because INFJs understand and empathize with those who are suffering and are natural helper, helpers, healers. Okay, uh, you will get too close to vendors, customers, employees, and the day-to-day -day operations, and that is going to create an insidious time suck from you from the business. Time is money in business. Philanthropy. INFJs want to want the world to be a better place and generally strive to do something concrete to help the suffering and less fortunate. From volunteering to founding an NGO to straight up philanthropy, you will find many INFJs promoting the welfare of others. Okay. Um, Non-shrewd. Okay. So what that does is that creates a non-shrewd business owner. Margins are everything. So because of, remember I talked about finance and remember I talked about vendors. So you are in customers. You are not going to pay attention to margins. 
So therefore, you're probably going to give away the farm, be less profitable, and you're going to care about the customer's business and their profitability and their life more than you will your own, thus harming your ability to finance your company and provide the life for yourself and or your family at the expense of the profitability and, well, success of your customers, vendors, and your employees. Uh, teaching again with helping. Help clients too much protect, uh, what is that? Can, uh, what does that say? I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. So basically teaching again with help. So if you are talented in a customer's business and you know it well, you are going to spend time helping the customers instead of understanding that they are a customer and you have your own business to run. Artist, designer, very creative types, but with a need to do something concrete and useful, not just something pretty or simple and nice to look at. There is money. Okay. As it relates to marketing and graphic design and writing, there's no money in it. There is no money in it. But as an INFJ, that creative part of you, you're going to be drawn to it. And it will insidiously pull you into startup one, extending startup two, and moving away from the day-to-day -day operations of repeating what made your sale. That's what business is. Make a sale. Repeat what you did to make the first one, the second one, third one, and it's a day to day and you just keep doing it. That's it. Clergy, religious leader, the sincere kind, not the kind that sells salvation in order to own a private jet and live in mansions, not the kind who orders followers to hate his or her fellow men, but the wise and gentle one who truly practices what he or she preaches and works toward loving and harmony amongst all people, all face. Uh, when last time a counselor, okay. When was the last time a counselor or religious person was a successful business selling a product or a service? Never. Get it? Okay. All right. Okay, so this next one here, we'll go this part. Okay, the, what are the three main defining qualities of INFJs? All parts of being the moralistic, judgmental, altruistic nutcases that make them so interesting. Love INFJs. Okay, moral maturity. business. Okay, they have a very good view of what is right or wrong, and they go out of their way to improve that view via news, documentaries, travel, and academia. Business is, okay. Business is not about moral or honor. Business is about being true. The business is an entity in and of itself and it's an extension of you and it needs money to survive. And the only way for it to survive in such a competitive environment in 2020 is to be shrewd. And an INFJ is going to have an extreme amount of difficulty with that type of shrewdness when it has employees, customers, and vendors pulling at the uh, emotional strings of the INFJ. Okay, so the INFJ is going to want to help employees, customers, and vendors, uh, and the finances are, are going to suffer because the INFJ will not look at margins and will give away the farm, hurt the business. Truly living the moral code, they don't preach, they act on their morals, INFJs nudge, counsel, help, and crusade if needed to make the world a better place, especially for those less fortunate. This is not an ideal to them, it is a way of life. If all your friends abandon you and you are alone in the worst of circumstances and have no one to help, the person who comes to stand by you will be an INFJ. The moral thing that also means that they do not tend to give a crap about shallow stuff like personal wealth and ostent oh, ostentatious possessions. Okay. Personal wealth and materialism is what drives the entrepreneur to succeed. Most entrepreneurs are materialistic at their core, being the fact that the INFJ is not. What is the purpose for them being an entrepreneur in the first place? Because the business, because the goal of a business is to make money. Every employee, every customer, every vendor, every financial decision, every marketing, every day-to-day -day decision, startup, secondary startup, and day-to-day -day operations, the goal is about one thing, making money. Period. End of story. Number uh, number one, okay, that's, I'm talking, depending on how talented you are, you will try to help your clients thus becoming too involved with them. Okay, you don't preach, you live the moral code. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to become involved with your customers and employees, but mainly your customers, and you're going to become too involved in their businesses, and this is something that will continue, continuously be said by me. Number three, INFJ social interactions. Part of the moral thing I figure is being 
quite judgmental about people. INFJs tend to make snap decisions about people, classifying them as good, amusing, deep people. They do not be around, do not want to be around boring, shallow people. They only engage in superficial conversations with a bad, really superficial people. They avoid at all costs. INFJs then tend to try and steer all blah, blah, blah. You get it. <laughs> if you didn't hear what I just said, this is exact opposite to business ownership, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship and business does not give a shit about any of this. The business is about making money and everything in it and around it and every decision and every effort is about that business making money, period. All right. Okay. A uh, creator of, well, for forget. For, why is being around an IFJ so relaxing despite their complex nature? It's not relaxing for everyone to be around an INFJ. For those who do feel at ease, there are several reasons. And I'm relating all of this to INFJ and the entrepreneur. We are not competitive with any, anyone other than ourselves. We generally want others to succeed. How is that going to work for you? If that's the case, you're going to want your customers to, to succeed more than your profit line. You're gonna want your employees to earn more and more and more money as you enrich their lives. You are going to not be as shrewd as you should and you are gonna pay more for your cost of goods than you should. You're gonna develop relationships with your vendors and not fire them for not giving you the margin that you need. You're also not going to fire customers. There is a point in business where you must fire, where you must tell customers, I don't want to deal with you anymore. Same thing with employees because time is money. We are affectionate and sensual if we love you in a romantic way. That can feel very relaxing. That just says, no, that's over the top and it probably it doesn't even matter. Whatever. Okay. You won't feel judged. The judge, the J is not just mental. It is a letter of code for determining the functions. We are in I F E T I S E, blah, 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 blah. We spend a lot of time on the other side, more so than most people that leave us with a perfect love aura that comes from being in God's presence. I'm sorry. If, that's going to, if that is what you are going to come at a business in or entrepreneurship, I can tell you right now, unless you are in the business of giving everything away for free, you are going to fail. Period. We are good under pressure, under stress. We use extroverted sensing, which gives us exceptional abilities. Yes, INFJs are so good under pressure so good that it is possible, depending on your childhood and depending on what you went through through life before you became an entrepreneur, will you create stressful situations instead of day-to-day -day calm to feed your self-esteem? Think about that for a second. We know how to create a pleasant home environment with all the senses, very good at feng shui and the art of living. We are good listeners with most people. If your vendors, customers, employees, finance, marketing, and day-to-day, -day, getting through startup one, startup two, going into day-to-day, -day, this will get sucked out of you and you will not have that for your personal life. Period. End of story. It will cease to exist. Good listeners. Oh, yeah. You'll be a good listener, all right? For every single one of your employee problems, for every single one of your customer problems, and as you develop the friendships, which you will, with regards to your vendors and the marketing and the day-to-day -day and those who work with you, whether employees or outside service contractors, you will get into their lives as well. Not to mention, not to mention, you will also, with regards to your own personal life, whether you are married, children, or single, dating, doesn't matter. Family will suck the life out of you as you listen so very well. INFJs have the ability to make a person feel at ease whether they are the leader of the free world or a person in a lowly position in life. As for the people who don't feel relaxed, it's because we aren't trying. We feel cold. What contributor Jason said is very true. The INFJ has an ice queen side. The ice queen side and the ability to slam doors 
will make you as an entrepreneur think more personal so you will answer employees, answer customers, answer vendors, deal with marketing and the day-to-day -day from that personal side, that deep-rooted personal side. Business is straight structured. It has no personality. It buys from a vendor, marks it up, sells it to the customer for the most efficient price at the same time earning a profit so that you can pay employees, continue to market the business, deal with day to day, and hopefully there's more than 10 to 15% left over for your own personal life. I saved that for last. What is the average profit after you are done when you start a company for the owner of a business? to 20% when it is all said and done. And what is the basic average? 15% and below. That's how, that's how it works out in all of my businesses and everything I've, right? Okay, this is a video, INFJ and the entrepreneur, career advice, lessons learned. I didn't cover lessons learned as, like it says, what you were, what I hope that you got was that you listened to what people are saying about the INFJ and what traits are in the INFJ. And I told you the reality of what the INFJ and the mistakes that are going to be made with regards to lessons that are learned by understanding who and what an INFJ is and what a business truly needs. This is Marty, and we'll see you in the next video. So as you can see, I talked really, really fast. I'm like really winded. I've, the last two videos were like an hour and a half each, you know, so I wanted to make this one as short as possible. I will expand on this and I will go uh, deeper into career advice. And I'll, I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll look into the questions and details uh, that are online with regards to the INFJ and other MBTI types. And, and in comparison, um, so that you can get a better understanding of where the INFJ is going to shine and basically where it's going to have a very, very difficult time. All right. Um, maybe one of these days I'll do a video on, on my background, but, but I don't think it's necessary because, well, you either know your shit or you don't. And I hope that everything I just said and did hit home. This is Marty. We'll see you in the next video.